Welcome everybody, thank you for joining me here. I am Sim the Crypt Keeper and we have another ICO review for you guys today. First of all, thank you guys so much for all of you who have been subscribing and liking and sharing and commenting on all of my videos. I do really enjoy engaging with you guys, so I'm very appreciative of that. Almost at 200 subscribers now in a couple of weeks in a very bearish market, if I may say so myself. So I am very happy and delighted with that. Uh, now, without further ado, let's get straight into our ICO review for today. And this one will be Quant Network. So Quant, what are Quant? Quant is basically an overledger network, which is a layer that sits on top of blockchains to allow them to operate amongst themselves easily. So as we know by now that if you want to operate between the Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains, that is just not possible. You can't have your system running on one blockchain and then simultaneously running, uh, you know, easily with another blockchain also. So Quant Overledger allows simple interoperability between blockchains, which of course will become extremely handy when you know, new enterprise wants to join the blockchain revolution, but don't want to sit there and write entire brand new systems because they need to have their work on certain blockchain. This will allow new systems to easily operate and test their work on many different blockchains without needing to commit entirely to one blockchain. Okay, let's have a look at their website here. So you can see the first blockchain operating system that facilitates the development of multi-chain applications. Here we have some links. This one here will go directly to the white paper, I believe. And if we take a look at the white paper, this thing is mammoth. We have 48 pages of detailed data uh, describing everything about this project. So, you know, go ahead and read that if you wish. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I did not read this. I did skim over this. I read lots of other documents that they have released. However, uh, to read this, I would need to dedicate about a week of my life to this ICO review. And right now, that is just not feasible. Full disclosure, guys, full disclosure. However, we have this beautiful little simple version of, of their white paper called At A Glance. They also have a business white paper, which I would recommend, which is much easier to read. Only about 25 pages or so. So it is a much easier read here. There we go, guys, 28 pages. Uh, this is one that I have spent a lot of time reading and understanding. And it, again, it is detailed enough to get a really good gist of, of you know, what's going on, what Quant, Quant are doing here. Uh, again, that's too long for us now, but we have this at a glance page, which is wonderful. Overledger, the first blockchain operating system to enable the development of multi-chain applications. The blockchain operating system of the future. So let's read a little bit about the problem, limitations of blockchain technology. Not since the internet itself has a technology shown such promise as the blockchain. There are certain limitations though. One of the major limitations of current single ledger technology that Overledger will address is the lack of interoperability and single ledger dependence. In order to unlock the true potential of blockchain technology, we need to enable seamless communication across multiple blockchains. Absolutely. So the solution is Overledger, the first blockchain operating system to enable the development of multi-chain applications. Overledger has the ability to unlock and distribute value and applications across current and future blockchains, Overledger is an agnostic platform that connects the world's networks to blockchains and ensures you are not limited to any single vendor or technology. How? So how is it going to do this? Connects the world's networks, a single API to multi-black blockchain and bridge existing networks to new blockchains, enable interoperability, provide the ability to read and write to blockchains without third-party intervention, unlock and transfer value between blockchains, Deliver value, facilitate the evolution of smart contracts to treaty contracts that are recognized across all blockchains. Deliver cost saving by providing enterprises ability to manage blockchain fees. Overledger is not another blockchain, it's the Overledger which sits on top of blockchains providing a meta gateway. Excellent. Uh, this is a blog press print that we have written by Gilbert, which is the CEO and founder of Quant. And I've just highlighted some really awesome information stuff here. Um, let's have a read of this. Overledger will address major limitations of blockchain technology, lack of interoperability and single ledger dependence. Overledger is the only platform to facilitate internet scale development of decentralized multi-chain applications, maps, and multi-chain smart contracts, treaty contracts. Overledger's unique platform and solution solutions will connect the internet to blockchain. The key to unlocking the true potential of blockchain technology and facilitating the mass adoption of blockchain technology is enabling applications to function across multi -block multiple blockchains whilst not being limited to any single vector or technology. 
Overledger will enable seamless communication across multi multiple blockchains, as well as the recognition of transactions across blockchains. So again, that was a quote taken uh, by Gilbert, who is the CEO and founder of Quant Network. He also went on to say that by finally effectively addressing the lack of interoperability, Overledger will unlock the true potential of the blockchain technology and drive its mass adoption. The potential impact of what we are creating with our community is infinite. It signals a new era of increased security, privacy, and efficiency of data that will not only empower businesses, but also society in general, said Verdian. Now that's great. Again, you know, these projects that are going to help us bring the blockchain technology to the mainstream are excellent. We cannot underestimate how important these projects are. We all want mainstream adoption for blockchain, which we know is inevitable. This thing will happen, but these are the kind of projects that are going to be helping this happen. Projects that allow the simplified integration of existing systems and platforms into um, blockchain technology. So guys, let's take a look at their token metrics here. Uh, now they do have a total of 15 million quant tokens available in their pre-sale and private sale, plus an additional 16 million available for the token generation event. So a total of 31 million tokens uh, for sale in their token generation event and an additional 14,467,000 are vested. So only a total token cap of 45 and a half million or so. Uh, now in terms of their hard cap, the first 15 million tokens were at $1 US each and 16 million additional tokens were at $1.60 each. So we can figure that out quite simply. What will happen is we have $15 million initially for the pre-sale cap and another $1.60 multiplied by 16 million is another 25 million. So 15 to that. 40 million and six hundred thousand is their hard cap so that's not a very large hard cap which is relatively good let's get the other details in here we have 31 available and the total amount of tokens bear with me just a second 45.467 one full point generator for the amount of tokens available in the ICO, a full point generator for the amount of total tokens. And I believe this will also be, or just a 0.7 there for the percentage available. And the hard cap will generate a total of 3.22 points. Now, Quant is an open source project. The only part of the project that is not open source is their paint, patented uh, core code. Uh, that makes quant what they are but other than that everything else is completely open source and community based which is excellent the ticker there is qnt also okay let's move on there's a couple of articles here also listed on the quant website one from nasdaq.com uh, which is written by julio prisco who's a writer for bitcoin magazine so i do encourage you guys to go ahead and read these articles they are a great little read i'll have links to them in the description section below the video uh, another little introduction here posted by hacker noon which is shared uh, a shared post by the quant network um, and also another one here in packet hub the blockchain to fix all blockchains Overledger, the meta blockchain, will connect all existing blockchains. Okay, so that's another excellent article there. Okay, guys, now let's take a quick look at the team to make it a little bit simpler and save a little bit of time. I have created a little bit of an easier method to do that in one of my spreadsheets. So the Quant team and advisory board, we've got Gilbert Verdian, the CEO and co-founder. Now, some of his experience here was a secure payments task force for the Federal Reserve System in the United States, uh, chair of DLT1 and UK standardization delegation. Um, and they have a total of 68,000 LinkedIn followers with 5,600 employees. Now, I'll tell you this just to give you an understanding of how large some of these organizations are. Uh, founder blockchain ISO standard TC307, the ISO, which is the International Organization for Standardization, 70,000 followers, 811 employees. He worked at BP, HSBC, and was a consultant for Ernst & Young in Sydney, which is one of the largest consulting firms uh, in the planet, I believe, with 2.1 million followers and over 250,000 employees on LinkedIn. Then we have the chief strategist and co-founder, Paolo Tusca. Now, Paolo was the executive director for the UCL Center for Blockchain Technologies. He was also a lead economist at the Deutsche Bundesbank. 
He did that for two, two years and a bit in Germany. Uh, postdoctoral researcher at ETH in Zurich. Uh, dean of research in China and a research associate in London. So here we got we have uh, Zurich in Switzerland, Frankfurt, Germany, London, China, London again. So very diverse, traveling, well-traveled people working here, guys. Colin, who's a CTO and the other co-founder, the third co-founder, was a lead information risk manager, security test manager at CSC. Uh, they have over 500,000 followers, 61,000 employees on LinkedIn. The security managing consultant at Nationwide Building Society, 58,000 and 11,000 employees, huge. Pentester at The Guardian IT. I'm not sure what a pen tester is there. That's an interesting little, uh, I'm not sure if that's a little side joke or what that is, but that is interesting. Either way, they have 178,000 followers on LinkedIn and 2,000 employees. So I would assume with so many employees, testing pens would be a very critical and crucial part of the establishment. Go Colin. Also information security lead at BT with 280,000 followers, 67,000 employees and worked at Barclays, the bank as well. Then we have Jean-Paul Dion, who is the chief architect, who was a specialist consultant at the NCA, the National Crime Agency, uh, associate at Methods, a new self-assessment main tax return at HM Revenue and Customs, services and operations program manager at Camelot. And just look at these numbers, guys. They're all huge. So these are all well-established large organizations. Uh, KPMG, another one in there. And we have, oh, this is, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pronounce this name properly, Lucina Mardirasonian. Let me try that one again. Lucina Mardirosian, who's the head of corporate affairs and investor relations. Uh, now, she was a senior media relations manager for the Asia Pacific region of Pfizer. Pfizer have 1.8 million followers, 120,000 employees, manager in global brand communication at Abvi, manager and of international public affairs at Abbott Labs, and senior account executive at Hill and Knowlton. Now, again, these are all absolutely massive organizations with huge followers and huge employee bases. So that's the team members there, guys, with a awesome, awesome repertoire of people like that, that is going to generate an easy to give four points for our team score here. There's our four in there. Let's take a look at the advisors. The advisors, we are going to go to the LinkedIn profiles. We have Tariq Khan here. Um, now, Tariq has an entrepreneurial experience. Mm. Natarik is entrepreneur in residence at Techstars. Uh, he was an uh, early stage advisor and investor. Did a few other things there. Has a legal counsel at GE Money. We know that they are absolutely huge. Was there for three years. Let's move on to the next advisor. We have Renier Jans van Rensburg. Now we have managing director at Growth Pains, associate principal at Blockchain Hub Limited. Uh, here we go, the advisor at Quant, associate principal at Tamico. Associate Consultant, New Lit Consulting, HSBC, Anti-Money Laundering for the Royal Bank of Scotland. Loads and loads of experience there. Also, we have Dr. John F. Lambert. Uh, let's have a look at his experience. Board Director at HISA, Australia's Health Digital Community. Uh, inaugural Chief Clinical Information Officer at eHealth New South Wales. A doctor at New South Wales Health. Again, lots of experience. We have Adriano Basso, an advisor for Brighton.io, advisor for Token Funder, a director of IT company there, Butterfield and Robinson. Robinson, sorry. You know, so again, guys, lots and lots of experience. If you guys, I do urge you to go ahead and do your own research into these guys as well. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at them. And the final advisor on the list on their website is Chris Adelbach. Adelsbach. And here we go, Managing Director of Techstars, Alumni Board of Governors for the University of Michigan, Advisory Board Member at Rails Bank. Again, GE Money, Director of New Markets, Director of and General Manager, Head of Asset Management. Loads and loads of experience. So these guys are going to get a full two points for our advisory section as well. It's a maximum of two there. And that's going to generate the full points of two and full score of four points in our team member section also. Now, in terms of a prototype, uh, these guys, look, it's not an app, so there's no actual prototype to speak of. However, there is some information in their GitHub. Um, you can go ahead and check all that stuff out. Plus, they have been working on their, their testnet um, and, you know, some of their protocols for quite a while now. In, in all of their research and development stage, they were working on all of the code as well. Um, 
Now, we have heard that the testnet alpha or the alpha will be available by Q2 2018. So that basically means that there'll be a version of the MVP out there that people can go ahead and start testing things. And they'll be starting off with Bitcoin connectors and Ethereum connectors. So the two main big blockchains in the space will be the ones that they will be, they will be working on initially. They are the ones that we will be able to test out when they are released in Q2. Um, now they've been written since last year, as I mentioned, some components are already complete and other ones are already being uh, worked on at the moment. And some of them can handle up to a couple of hundred transactions per second. Now this information I heard, uh, listening to an AMA from the Quant CEO, you can see that on YouTube. It is a wonderful C uh, AMA. I do recommend that you have a listen to that if you are interested in this project. I'll have a link to that in my description section below the video also. Let's talk a little bit about some use cases here. Now, there is a bank use case here. So uh, banks have been currently partaking in some blockchain experiments. However, they've been hesitating to take further steps because they're not sure which one to back. Of course, once they back a blockchain and put all their systems and data into that blockchain, if something were to go wrong down the track, then they would be kind of stuck. So they're looking at using quants to de-risk their, their blockchain experiments. Now, using Quant will give the enterprises the ability to have more freedom and flexibility to do more with the blockchain and truly be across multiple chains. Uh, so they'll be creating maps, which are multiple chain applications. Uh, they can have bits of their applications on different blockchains to help give them resilience and to manage costs. So that gives them, again, heaps of flexibility and openness to do things very differently. Uh, another use case here would be a startup that Quant are currently working with, uh, and this startup is working in identity for airports, the Dubai airport, which I think is one of the biggest airports, if not the, the second largest airport in the world in terms of traffic going through there. Uh, and that is the customer, the first customer of the startup that Quant are talking with and are doing some business with. Uh, so basically you get off the plane, uh, there won't be immigration because the uh, the ID, the facial recognition system will immediately ID people and then you can walk straight through because the system knows exactly who you are. So now Dubai gets approximately 20 million passengers per month. Per month. So this is something that obviously is great to be on the blockchain. The problem, however, is what happens when you get to the next airport? How can one airport work with the other airport in terms of exchanging information and data for identity? So say one airport uses uses a blockchain such as Hyperledger, however the other airport is using Ethereum, then the blockchains can't communicate with one another. So Quants will come into place there and be able to build a bridge between the two blockchains to allow for this data to be communicated across, which, you know, I don't need to tell you how awesome that will be. It will allow all of these different systems, not only airports, but many, many other systems currently in place, such as governments, healthcare, supply chain, financial services, which are four, four areas that Quants are planning to work with, uh, will allow them to all communicate easily cross blockchain. Let's take a look now at the community and see how large that is. So we'll go here to the Quant website again. Let's go down now and check out our Twitter page and also our Telegram. And here we go, join Telegram. So we'll click the join Telegram and we'll see how many we have there to give us a total score in our community section. Again, that was 1641 in Twitter. And just waiting for this to load. 1641 and 2443. 2443 plus 1641 equals a total of 4,084 members in our community. 4,084 giving us a total score there of 0.2. So clearly lots of room to grow here, guys. You know, we do hope that they are able to grow that community. It will really help in the long term. And this is going to go down as an infrastructure project generating a score of one point in this section here. And our, and our idea. Now, guys, again, our idea section is an accumulation of everything I think about this project. From the team to advisors to the idea in itself, the token metrics, whether it's open source and decentralized. In this case here, I have no doubt that these guys are going to be able to pull off what I you know, can see is a really, really strong project, which will have lots of use cases in the future with blockchain mainstream adoption just around the corner. So guys, that does it for our ICO review of Quant Network, this Overledger project. So we will go ahead and generate our final score now. Copy this section in there, giving us a total grade of 23.71 and a percentage of 91.18, which sits us 
well, it's not in the correct order there, which puts us in fifth position on our spreadsheet, which is absolutely awesome. It gets into the top five projects along with Go Network, Next Exchange, One Ledger, and Coinvest in terms of my spreadsheet. As always, please do all of your own research. My ideas and opinions are completely subjective and they are my views only. If this is a project that you do want to invest in, please read the business paper. Give the white paper a crack if you if you have you know a bit of time up your sleeve. Uh, but you know, all in all, I do think it's a great project with lots of future potential and really, really important coming. Uh, up to mainstream adoption days, which we are getting close to. Again, guys, that's all from me. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you did like this video, would really appreciate a subscription from you. Hit the subscribe button below, give us a thumbs up, and you can see all of my links to different social media and community platforms in the description box. So please feel free to join them also. If you have any requests for ICOs that would you like you would like me to have a look at and give a review over the spreadsheet and perhaps even do a video review on, please go ahead, join my communities and my different links below and send that through. Thank you so much for now, guys, and we will see you guys next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.